Hi guys. In this lecture, we're going to talk about creating a physical standby database. After you finish this lecture, you should learn how to do the following. Understand Oracle Data Guide requirements. Plan for creating a physical standby database. How to configure log archive destination in parameter and create a physical standby database. When you want to configure an Oracle Data Guard, the operating system and the platform architecture must be the same for the primary database and the standby database. However, the hardware like the CPUs, memory size, storage configuration can be different. The Oracle database release must be exactly the same. If you are using release 12.1.0.1 for a primary database, the Oracle database release in the standby database must exactly be the same. Also, the primary database must run in archive log mode. And finally, database must operate in force logging mode. As we have discussed in the last lecture, it's highly recommended to enable the flashback database in, the, in all the data guard members in any data guard environment. Data guard relies on Redo for synchronization. Therefore, any no logging operations is not allowed. The following statement has the no, log the no logging option create table or alter table, create or alter index, direct load with SQL loader or insert statement. If you are using those statements in your database, you can't use the no logging option when data guard is enabled in the database. To force the database to stop any logging operations, you can execute the following statement, alter database force logging. When you issue this statement, any statement with no logging option will be ignored. Standby redo log files are files that you create in the standby database. And they are used to, st to store redo received from another Oracle database. Their structure is identical to the redo log files. They are divided into groups and each group has members in it. However, usually with SRL, it is recommended not to multiplex the files. You only need one file in each group. Also, when you configure SRL, they must be of the same size as of the online Redolog files in the primary database. For a single instance database, the number of standby Redolog files are the same as the number of Redolog files in the primary database plus one. If you have a rack database, you use this formula. The number of Redolog groups plus one altogether multiply by the number of threads. SRL files could have their own ARC process, which is responsible for archiving them. To create a SRL file, you simply issue the following, the following command. Alter database, add standby log file, followed by the full path of the file, and then it, you define its size. We will use this command in the next practice when we create the physical standby database. Log archive destination is the parameter that you use in the primary database to give it information about how to connect with the standby database. And also you define the configuration of your data guard all in this single parameter. That's why this parameter is the most important parameter in any data guard configuration. It tells primary database to which standby database it should connect. And also it has the attributes or the uh, configurations of your data guard environment. You can configure up to nine log archive destination, which means a primary database could have up to nine standby database. We will learn in the incoming uh, slides about 
the most important attributes in this parameter, which are used for configuring your data guard uh, environment. Here I'm listing the most important attributes in the log archive destination parameter, which are used to configure your data guard. First attribute in my list is service. Service is used to point to the standby database. It tells the primary database to which standby database it should connect. You configure the descriptor in the TNS names.ora. Sync and async are mutual exclusive. Either you use sync or async. You cannot use both of them together. Sync is used, you can, I think you can guess what is it about. It is used if you want to use synchronous redo transport. Just to remind you, when you use synchronous redo transport, the log writer is not allowed to acknowledge a commit has succeeded until the LNS confirms that the redo log needed to recover the transaction has been received and written to the disk at the standby site. So the primary database will wait for the standby database to acknowledge that the redo has been received and saved to the disk. That's why this method is called zero data loss. Therefore, you use this attribute when you want to make your data guard configuration run in maximum availability or maximum protection modes. Asynchronous is used when you want to define asynchronous redo transport, which is used in maximum performance mode. Net timeout defines the number of seconds the log writer process will wait for an LNS process to respond before abandoning the standby database as failed. This attribute is used only when you use synchronous redo transport. If the standby database goes down or the network between the standby database and the primary database goes down, the primary database will wait for this amount of seconds before abort. The default value of this attribute is 30 seconds. It's, it is recommended to set it to 15 seconds. Reopen is used to define the number of seconds before the data guard will allow the primary database to attempt a reconnection to a failed standby database. The default is 300 seconds. This is a high value. It is recommended to set it between 15 and 30. This is fair enough value because if you have your network going down for, for a short time, you don't have to let the primary database waiting for 300 seconds before trying to reconnect to the standby database. We have another two attributes, affirm and no affirm. Affirm and no affirm are mutual exclusive. You can only use one of them at a time. When you use affirm, the redo transport service in the primary database waits for the acknowledgement from the destination that the redo has been received and written to the standby redo log. When you use no affirm, the redo transport service in the primary database waits for the acknowledgement from the standby database that the redo has been received but not necessarily saved in the disk. This can be used to enhance the performance of the maximum protection mode because when you use it the primary database doesn't have to wait for both receiving and saving the, the redo log files from the standby database it will only acknowledge receiving the files if you don't use any of those attributes in your uh, parameter the default is affirm when the sync attribute is specified and no affirm when the asynchronous attribute is specified DB unique name is used to tell the primary database about the database unique name of the standby database. Valid for is another important attribute in the log archive destination parameter. This attribute specifies whether redo data will be written or sent to a destination based on the following, the type of archiving files and the role of the database. The options for the type of archiving files are online, standby, or all log files. 
the options for the role of the database are primary role, standby role, and all roles. Let's take an example. If you define the type of archiving log files, online log files, and the role of the database, primary role. This tells Oracle that you use this destination. If the database is running, if the current database is running as primary database, and if the redo log files you are trying to send or save are online redo log files, not standby log files. So in this example, if the primary database becomes standby as a result of switch over or failover, the database will not use this destination. This attribute is optional. However, Oracle recommends that this attribute be specified for each Redo transport destination at each database in a data guard configuration so that the Redo transport continues after a role transition to any standby database in the configuration. We will learn in the course about the proper configuration for this attribute as we create the standby databases in our practices. This is a setting example of the log archive destination. In this example, the standby database is mydb dr0 and it is using synchronous Redo transport services. The primary database will wait for 15 seconds if the network goes down before trying to reconnect again. The net timeout is set to 15 seconds. The valid for is online log files and primary role which means this destination will be enabled and used only if the current database is running as primary database and if it is archiving the online redo log files which is which makes sense of course because if this database becomes a standby database it shouldn't send the redo log files anymore to my db underscore dr0 the unique name in this case is the same as the service, which is mydb underscore dr0. A very important parameter that you should configure alongside with the log archive destination is log archive config. This parameter must be set when you use log archive destination for defining standby database. This parameter is easy to set. You only list all the databases included in your data guard configuration. So with this parameter, the database can understand what are the data guard members, all the databases involved in your data guard configuration. In this examples, we have one primary database, which is mydb, and another two standby databases, which are mydb underscore dr0 and mydb underscore dr1. From my experience, I noticed that the entries in the dgconfig are case sensitive. 